Ever wonder what a detailing chemical development lab looks like? Hi, I'm Ivan, this is DIY Detail. Today we're going to show you a few things about a chemical development lab. This is the lab that we use, one of the labs, and as you can see, there's a lot of equipment and a lot of chemicals. These chemicals, they can be mixed together, they can be modified, they can be changed to get what we need. And in doing so, there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, let's look over here. So these are some of the abrasive samples and not all the abrasives that they have available to us. These are just some of them. We have all sorts of colors. So what color do you want? We have all sorts of different colors and scents to get that fragrance and that color that you like. And when we're mixing products, we need to make sure that, an example, the color of the fragrance isn't going to cause separation of the product, isn't going to break anything down. So that's an important part of it, is having the proper things. With our soaps, with everything else, we actually have cosmetic grade products in there. The fragrances, the colors are all cosmetic grade and a lot of the products in our soap, like Incredible Suds, is also cosmetic grade. So it's actually safer to use than maybe your shampoo that you're using. This is where the mixing actually happens. This is a vent hood. Uh, that way, when the chemist is working, he's not getting any fumes, he's not breathing anything. And if there is a uh, chemical reaction, this door closes very quickly. There's fire extinguishers in there, so a very safe process. Uh, different mixing products. As you can see, the humidity and temperature is controlled in the building, and we have humidity and temperature for outside, and then humidity and temperature for inside. That way, when things are mixed, they work every time. Uh, we have different things of mixing, and this is fun if you've never seen one of these or if you don't remember chemistry in school, but there's a little magnet in here. And as this turns, we can actually create a little cyclone in here. Doesn't really do anything, but it's fun to watch. Uh, we have a microscope. The microscope we can actually hook up as well to different things, but it allows us to see a hundred times and greater magnification. That way we can check out the abrasives, how they're working, etc. So this is just a quick tour of a lab, how things work. Uh, you can see just some of the chemicals that are out here for doing testing. There's a lot more involved to it than that. And we'll take you to the next room where a lot of the cool test equipment is to see how these things actually work. This is a very interesting machine. This is to give you the contact angle of water. Uh, so when we're testing coatings, we want to know that contact angle. This is how it works. Camera here, the drop of water comes out there, the back there, and it tells us the actual contact angle. We can see it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, and that's how we can determine exact contact angles. That's the machine to do it. This one is an accelerated testing for product separation. There's two of these in the lab, one at 45 degrees Celsius and the other one at 52 degrees Celsius to see what's happening with separation and or if we're getting separation. So very important that the product stays stable on the shelf. This machine is almost here as a joke because every coating company tells you their pencil hardness test. This is the machine that does the pencil hardness test. But in reality, the coating is not giving you a pencil hardness test you're putting it over something that's much softer. So you have your paint that you're putting it on, you put it over the, uh, the paint, the paint underneath it is much softer than the coating, the coating's not gonna harden the paint underneath it. So this is actually, yes, we can get pencil hardness testing, but unless you're putting the coating on something that's harder than the coating, you're actually not going to get the same, or you're not gonna get the accurate reading of what the coating is doing. The next one, this one's fun, and it actually has a, a purpose. This is the friction coefficient tester, or if you want to check the slickness of something, this is the one that actually tests the slickness. This is the one that can give us a quantitative measure of this is how slick it actually is or isn't. One thing that's important is how does the product perform in the bottle? 
And in this chamber, we can actually create a vacuum and a pressure to see how the bottle reacts, how the bottle works. Because when we're shipping stuff overseas by plane, we want it to get to the other side without exploding or imploding in the plane. This contraption, and it, it looks something almost homemade, but it isn't. This is for ASTM testing of fabrics. And water goes in here, your fabric is stretched here with basically a paper towel underneath. And the paper towel, you measure it before, the weight of it, and you measure after. You let this water go down, it hits the fabric at a certain pressure, angle, et cetera, as you can see, and then you measure the penetration if there is any. So if your paper towel underneath is perfectly dry, great. If your paper towel isn't, then you see the penetration. With the DIY interior ceramic coating, we're actually not going for hydrophobics. We're going for protection when it comes to uh, staining and durability of the fabric. So actually making the fabric wear a little less. But it's nice to know that the penetration isn't as good as just the raw fabric. We're getting very little penetration. This one here is an interesting one. This is a drop tester for glass. So you have a window. Uh, you want to see if the coating is actually changing something on the window. This is how we test it. So it drops from a certain height, certain weight, etc. We're not using that one yet. The Tabor style abrasion tester is basically to give you the durability of a coating versus abrasion. And this machine does that more specifically for industrial coatings like the C6 industrial coating, but the DIY coatings have survived this as well. This machine, very important for interior coatings. And the way this works is you'll put a piece of leather or whatever fabric you're wanting to test on this platen here. Then in these little holders, you put another piece of, let's say a gene. You want to check for gene transfer, gene dye transfer. You'll put it on here, and then this machine just rocks back and forth and moves back and forth, and the number of cycles before abrasion happens or color transfer happens, this will allow us to see that. We have a couple little smaller machines here. This one is for sampling the color, so we want when you're getting your incredible suds, that beautiful deep purple, we want that deep purple to be the same every time. And that's what this does. So it actually takes a reading and gives us what's going on in the color. And then we can make sure that batch to batch, we have exactly the same color specs for you. Of course, paint thickness gauge, everybody needs one of those and a gloss meter. Thanks for joining us in a little quick tour of a lab. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, leave them below. We'll see you in the next one.